So, hey everyone, um, we are here out on our front porch. Yeah. Um, we have been truly blessed. Uh, yesterday was like 75 degrees, oh, and yeah. today is another a little beautiful, cooler, little but cooler, nice. but a beautiful day. Um, we've got a lot done the past couple days. It's kind of crazy. Um, I guess it uh, feels like a, a warm fall. Yeah, so. <laughs> it's been nice. So. We are going to crack open our Bibles and read with you. So grab your Bible and join along with us. It has been a busy couple of days, and it's nice to just rest today. So um, there will be a link down below, so you can go click that link and pull the portions for yourself if you'd like. But the Torah portion is Genesis chapter 23, verse 1, through chapter 25, verse 18. And then you have the prophet section. 1 Kings chapter 1, verse 1 through 31. And then the gospel portion is John chapter 4, verse 3 through 14. So I think we're going to read the prophet section and the gospel section today. So, Absolutely. But we would love to hear how you guys are doing. So drop some comments down below. And if you are busy doing Bible studies and things like that, what are some things that you're studying right now? What are some little nuggets that you are finding as you're studying? Because we would love to hear all about it. Yes, indeed. And we hope you guys enjoy. Yeah. So, Shabbat Shalom from the Walterman Homestead. <laughs> Don't you love how if you read your Bible a lot and you have little nuggets buried in your Bible, whenever you pop things open, you find goodies. Mm -hmm. So, one of the things that I found is I have, like, this chart and it is of the northern kingdom and their southern kingdoms and the kings in each one and it's a big long list and then i have highlighted um, the things that did good and the things that did bad um, within god's eyes and it is just beautiful when you read like that and you see like the generational curses and you just see who did right and who did wrong and like what their rights and wrong wrongs were as you read so, chapter 1, verse 1 through 31. Yes. So now King David was old, advanced in, his, in years, and they put covers on him, but he could not get warm. Therefore his servants said to him, Let a young woman, a virgin, be shot for our Lord the king, and let her stand before the king, and let her care for him, and let her lie in your bosom that our Lord the King may be warm so they sought for a lovely young woman throughout all the territory of Israel and found Abishag the Shemite and brought her to the king the young woman was very lovely and she cared for the king and served him but the king did not know her then Adonai the son of Hegeth exalted himself, saying, I will be king. And he prepared for himself chariots and horsemen and fifty men to run before him. And his father had not rebuked at him at the time by saying, why, why have you done so? He was also very good looking. His mother had borne him after Abisom. Then he conferred with Job the son of Zerah and with Abathar the priest and they followed and helped Adonai but Zadok the priest Benai the son of Judah Nathan the prophet Shimei Re and mighty men who belonged to David were not with Adonai and Adonai sacrificed sheep and oxen and flattened the cattle by the stone of uh, Zeheleth, which is by En Wajel. He also invited all his brothers, the king's sons, and all the men of Ju uh, Judah, the king's servants, but he did not invite Nathan, Nathan the prophet. Benajah, the mighty man, or Solomon, his brother. So Nathan spoke to Bathsheba, the mother of Solomon, saying, Have you not heard that Adonai, the son of Haggith, had become king, and David our Lord does not know it? 
Come, please let me now give you advice. You may save your own life and life of your son Solomon. Go immediately to King David and say to him, Did you, did you not, my lord, O king, swear to your maidservant, saying, Assuredly, your son Solomon shall reign after me, and he shall sit on my throne? Why then has Adonai become king? Then why you are still talking, there was the king. I also will come and after you and confirm your words. So Bathsheba went into the chamber to the king. Now the king was very old, and Abishag the Shunammite was serving the king. And Bathsheba bowed and did not homage to the king. Then the king said, What is your wish? And she said to him, My lord, you swore by the Lord your God to your maidservant, saying, Assuredly, Solomon, your son, shall reign after me and shall sit on my throne. So now look, Adonai has become king, and now, my lord, the king, you do not know about it. He had sacrificed oxen and fattened cattle and sheep in abundance. And he has invited all the sons of the king, Abathar the priest, and Job, the commander of the army. But Solomon, your servant, he has not invited. And as for you, my lord, O king, the eyes uh, of all Israel are on you, that you should tell them who will sit on the throne, O my lord, the king, after him. Otherwise it will happen when my lord the king rests with his fathers and I, my son Solomon, will be counted as offenders. And just then, while she was still talking with the king, Nathan the prophet also came in. So they told the king, saying, Here is Nathan the prophet. And when he came in before the king, he bowed down before the king with his face to the ground. And Nathan said, My lord, O king, how have you said Adonai shall reign after me, and he shall sit on my throne? For he has gone down today and has sacrificed oxen and fattened cattle and sheep in abundance, and has in invited all the sons and the commanders of the army and Abathar and the priests. And look, they are eating and drinking before him. And they say, Long live King Adonai. But he has not invited me, me your servant, nor Zach the priest, nor Benai the son of Judah, nor your servant Solomon. Has this thing been done by my lord the king, and have not told your servant who should sit on the throne? O oh, my lord, the king after him. Then King David answered and said, Call Bathsheba to me, she said, came into the king's presence and stood before the king. And the king took an oath and said, As the Lord lives, who has redeemed my life from every distress, just as I swore to you by the Lord God of Israel, saying, Assuredly, king, sorry, Assuredly Solomon your son shall be king after me, and he shall sit on my throne in my place. So I certainly will do this day. Then Bathsheba bowed with her face to the earth and paid homage to the king and said, Lord, my king, David, live forever. Man, that's that's crazy when you, when you read um, those verses. Um, you know, you look, makes me think about today how people are always trying to uh, undermine people and, and how the Bible teaches these things, not only when we read it, but in real life. And it just gets, gets my blood flowing to notice what happens. I want to know what happens next. God. And how even back then they had family issues. <laughs> yeah. You know, in the Bible, the people are so relatable. The people that lived oh so long ago, they are relatable. And they all fell short, and they all had sin, and they all had struggles. And, you know, it's crazy to learn from them and to read their story. So... Ready to jump to the gospel? Exactly. <laughs> John 4, which is the story of the woman at the well. 
and I'm just going to add the little snippet of in reading the Bible, I have found a love for studying like plants that get mentioned and places. And one of the places that I would recommend researching is Shechem and all the places that it is mentioned in scripture and the amazing things that happened there and that in the beginning of time, <laughs> uh, it is where Abraham was with Sarah and how he built wells there. And then years later, it's where Jesus met the woman at the well. So John chapter four. Now my Bible is a complete Jewish Bible. So the wording is a little different than your standard Bible. <clears throat> when Yeshua learned that the Pharisee had heard he was making and immersing more Talmudine, which is disciples. Then Jonathan, <clears throat> Allah, although it was not Yeshua himself who immersed, but his Talmudine. Yeshua left Judah and set out for Galilee. This meant that he had to pass through Shemron. He came to a town in Shemron called Shechem, near the field Yehov, Jacob, had been given to his son Yosef, Joseph. Jacob's well was there. So Yeshua, exhausted from his travel, sat down by the well. It was about noon, and a woman from Shemron came to drink water there. And Yeshua said to her, Give me water to drink. His Talmudine had gone to town to buy food, and the woman from Shamron said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, can ask water from me, a woman of Shamron? For Jews don't associate with the people from Shamron. Yeshua answered her, If you knew God's gift, that is, who it is saying to you, Give me a drink of water, then you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. She said to him, Sir, you don't have a bucket, and the well is deep, so where do you get this living water? You aren't greater than our father, Yehov, are you? He gave us this well and drank from it, and so did his sons and his cattle. Yeshua answered, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water that I give will never be thirsty again. On the contrary, the water I give him will become a spring of water inside him, welling up into an eternal life. Isn't that beautiful? That's, it is the... It's, go ahead. <laughs> it's just the reminder of how Yeshua, how Jesus is our salvation. And, you know, when he gives us, he gives us eternal salvation. Exactly. He gives us... The Holy Spirit, he gives us salvation and it is just beautiful to read and to understand and to dig deeper and to keep our eyes fixed on him. It, is, it makes me also think about uh, the word trust, mm -hmm. you know, um, I read that and, you know, we may be blinded by sometimes that maybe God is, is giving us a gift right in front of our faces and we just have to trust that sometimes and not wonder or question it but give him the reins and uh, continue with the path that he has opened up for us oh that's a good one <laughs> to give god the reins isn't that the like the hardest thing sometimes because we as humans want to be in control of all of the things yeah. but it is beautiful when we let go and let god take over <laughs> it's not always the best like it's not always easy but the more you do it the beautiful and easier it gets. Exactly. That's kind of all that we have here today at the Walterman Homestead. <laughs> so, hey, uh, please uh, share with us, guys, on what you're studying uh, or uh, what else we can read maybe next time. So, thank you so much. Yeah, may Yahweh bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and may he give you his shalom. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye.